This is a download from BFM 89.9, the business station. That was she and him with Oh Boy right here on the evening edition BFM 89.9. You're with Caroline and Ezra. Now, this evening, we're going to be celebrating art in automotive culture. The Art of Speed aims to bring together world-class automotive uh, superstars under one event held annually in Malaysia that attracts regional and international visitors. Yeah. In 2013, there were over 60,000 visitors over the two days of the event from all over the world. Uh, there were exhibitors from Japan, the United States, States, Indonesia, Thailand, Singapore, and locals. There was art, food, lots of cars, and this year is going to be bigger and better. That's right. It takes place on the 7th and 8th of June 2014 at Chittamal Aradamansara from 10 o'clock onwards. The best part, free entrance. And of course, here's to tell <laughs> That's us... That's the best part. It is, it is, it always is. Uh, here to tell us more about custom culture, hot rods, and all of that stuff is Asip Ahmad Iskandar. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Terrific. Uh, now, Ahmad, uh, what exactly is uh, the Art of Speed about? Uh, where did it start? And tell us a little bit about the backstory there. Okay, Art of Speed is a celebration of art. Um, what differs us from the average show or the other shows out there is that we try to incorporate as much of the art aspect to it. Uh, every year from the first year that we held it in Publica, um, we kind of took over the white box uh, for our art gallery setting mm-hmm. and curate the cast that entered the show. So uh, that has just progressed into what it is today. Last year, we took up a space, an air-conditioned marquee, which is 100 feet by 45 feet, just to house the art gallery. And uh, we had over 250 custom vehicles, cars, bikes. Uh, We had a a, a bus chartered by the boys in Johor to bring their low-rider bicycles up to KL for the show. And uh, yeah, are they it, all are they all local vehicles or? Um, we we had local vehicles definitely from everywhere from Kelantan. Mm-hmm. Um, we had uh, American cars, six of them. Right. They drove uh, from Hatnyai to the show. Wow. Yeah. So uh, so every year as well, uh, we kind of uh, try to set um, trends in motion, or just to show guys who are customizing uh, what are the latest thing or what's uh, what's new in the scene by bringing in cars from abroad. Right. So last year we brought a, a hot rod, a true blue yeah. 1929 chop top, you know, everything. And those are really rare. <laughs> yeah, they are, you know, and, and to have it parked, uh, slammed to the ground uh, in front of your eyes. And it, it is not internet. Eh? You only see it online or on TV. This yeah. is live. So we bring that down because there was a lot of uh, this red rod thing going around. Mm-hmm. So we bring that, we bring bikes as well. Well, what's the response like to it ex- exactly? Uh, well, custom culture in its truest form is quite r- uh, still new in Malaysia. Yeah. So we try to educate and bring people closer together. So we speak out to uh, various communities to come, uh, the, B-boy boy, uh, the B-boys, the BMX community, the art uh, folks as well. Um, How about the general public? I mean, is there much interest um, or interest in bringing them in? Yes, because um, shows out there are more like showrooms. Yeah. Uh, you know, there are, there are shows. Uh, a lot shows. of nice cars, yeah. a lot of nice lighting. Yeah, yeah. Some yeah. but what, yeah. what we offer is something unique because it's personalised. So mm-hmm. for the general public to come, when they do come and have a look at it, they, they see something that they've probably never seen before. Right. Mm. right. And now, uh, you're the Managing Director of Switchblade KL and Initial Resources in Durham, uh, yeah. Tell us very briefly about uh, your role in that. Uh, Switchblade KL uh, is an online store now. We used to have a diner lifestyle store back in 2009 in Publica. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, rent got so high that you know we just had to pull it off and do it online. Uh, but we continue to propagate uh, that lifestyle, that whole Southern California custom culture vibe. I mean... Uh, I've been mem- mesmerized by it, you know, all my life. Growing up as a skateboarder, you see people like Max Chef, uh, Steve Caballero. They've grown from skateboarders to custom culture heroes, you know. So, so we're keeping that vibe still going on with events like this, night cruises and stuff. Terrific stuff. Yeah. I'm going to ask uh, Amar what exactly custom culture is, and we'll get back. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Who's <laughs> We'll get back to uh, this very interesting discussion about celebrating Mm. art in automotive culture. Mm. Uh, We've got some music for you coming up right after a quick word from our sponsors on BFM 89.9. Business, finance and more. BFM 89.9. It's the evening edition. You're with Caroline and Ezra. We're speaking about the Art of Speed, which aims to bring together world-class automotive superstars under one event, and that's going to be taking place on the 7th and 8th of June 2014. It's a weekend, a few weekends away, uh, at Chitamal Aradamansara, 10 o'clock onwards. Yeah, that's right. Our guest this evening is Asip uh, Ahmad Iskandar, and he's oh, telling us all about it, really. So, okay. 
let's go back to this um, this phrase custom culture um, it's not something I'm familiar with and neither is Ezra <laughs> you feel apparently. very happy about that don't I, you I do I thought it was something the young people are using and uh, I will be the only <laughs> one you know feeling a little bit left out so what is it okay custom culture is a phrase coined I think in the late 50s uh, the guy who created the word um, is Ed Roth he's a, he's a famous artist in the US mm-hmm. he builds uh, cars um, then in his generation there's people like George Barris who also built the Batman mobile oh so, wow. right. <laughs> yeah. Now you're placing some context, okay. Yeah, so it's, it's basically um, it's a, a, an expression of art through motor vehicles. Uh. Oh, I so, knew that. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's pretty <laughs> much that. So it's tied up uh, a lot to do with uh, things like pinstriping, tattoo arts, um, lowbrow art. What exactly is that, pinstriping? Pinstriping is, um, it started off as uh, lettering. You see at the side of lorries where they have letters on it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's something that's grown from that into an, its own little art form. So really? Yes, wow. correct. So uh, they, they include uh, things like uh, gold leafing, uh, silver leafing and uh, pinstriping uh, and guys have exhibitions in art galleries, uh, solo shows with that. Now what yeah. attracted you to custom culture because um, in terms of the exposure of it yeah. from uh, the States, uh, you know, how did it spread you know, across the world and specifically yeah. to this region? I, I, I fell in love with it um, basically uh, because I've always loved like Christmas though. When you, when you commission <laughs> someone oh. to do a piece of art, you, know, you don't know what you're getting. So, so when you commission someone, a custom culture artist, uh, that's pinstripe, for example, for my car, for example, I tell him more or less what I want. Then when it, when it appears be, before you, it's like, whoa, you know, and I've always loved that feeling and custom culture gives me that. It's kind of like yeah. going to a Japanese restaurant and telling the chef, you know, omakase, and then he'll just do whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, right, right. So, so it's, it's, I think uh, the biggest proponent of custom culture is in Japan. Because Japan has uh, had long ties with the US, mm-hmm. you know. So it's just grown from there. They host one of the biggest shows in the world, uh, Moon Eyes Yokohama Horror and Custom Show. So we went to that show, uh, we got inspired, we talked to them and they said, hey, we'll help you out, you know. Um, then we started doing it in Malaysia. You know? Our first show, in fact, uh, they came to support us. Uh, we didn't know that they were coming, mm. but they, they, they came for our show uh, in, in Publica. Mm. So after that, it was just uh, us going back and forth and just having a lot of fun. Now, that was certainly a barometer for you because, I mean, mm. you had a personal interest, but I yeah. guess you were wondering, you know, how, how you know, interesting is this to other folks? I mean, yes. wh- how did you gauge uh, the response? That's why we did it in Publica. Mm. We, we tried it out in a smaller scale, you know, uh, because tattoo artists, pinstripe, uh, this so-called trade art has always been, um, well, not shunned, but it's never been put in a place where uh, it's suitable for art. Like. It's never been in an art gallery. Right. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, why exactly is that? Is it just because it doesn't have the following it deserves yet? Um, I, I think... Culturally, yeah, yeah. It's, it culturally, it's also sort of seen as, you know, not... You know, fancy enough, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I guess right, so. Okay. Uh, a lot of these guys, um, uh, they modify uh, cars, mm-hmm. for example, or bikes, you right. know. Um, so usually it's the uh, concourse, the elegance that has the spotlight, right. but not the customized uh, Volvo 122 wagon slammed to the ground or a VW you know, similar fashion. So, yeah. so we take that and put them in a gallery situation mm-hmm. and and the reaction that we got was amazing. You know, pe- people, the crowd, the normal um, folks off the street who came in and said, wow, we didn't know Malaysia had all this. And and we're talking about talent, you know, and, and there is value to what they do. Uh, uh, a 23-window VW Combi. Right. Yeah, that's almost 100,000 ringgit. Goodness. And, yeah, and they slam it to the ground just because they want to. So that's that's all about that's what's uh, empowering about custom culture it's it's a lot of fun you know and and you see results when you when you commission people to do uh, artwork and stuff it's really rewarding and for the crowd you know they get to see something really really different we're speaking to Asif Ama Iskandar who's responsible for the Hour of Speed that's taking place on the 7th and 8th of June 2014 mm-hmm. we're speaking about custom culture we'll be right back after this but first some music Atlas Sound by The Shakes right here on BFM 89.9 we're on when you're off. Evening edition on BFM 89.9.
Good evening, I'm Ezra Zayed. Good evening, I'm Caroline O. And we're with Asim Ahmad Iskandar, Managing Director of Switchblade KL and Initium Resources, Sindiri and Berhad. Uh, we're speaking about, uh, of course, this huge event that's happening on the 7th and 8th of June 2014 at Chitta Mall, Arada Mansara, The Art of Speed. Uh, it aims to bring together world-class automotive superstars under one event. Uh, and, of course, uh, it's going to be attracting a lot of regional and international visitors as well. Um, now, tell us about, uh, you know, some of the uh, key highlights of this particular event. You're going to have a few personalities from Malaysia as well, but also uh, from overseas uh, coming into the event. Uh, remember that name, Ed, Ed Roth? Yes. Well, his student uh, is uh, uh, Wildman. Uh, his, name is, his nickname is Wildman, given by Ed Roth. Now, he's celebrating his 25th year anniversary of doing pinstriping, and he'll be here with... Uh, the guys from Moon Eyes Japan. Okay. Uh, so Moon Eyes is one of the biggest companies in the world that does hot rods. Uh, they have uh, uh, they, they have outlets in US, in Japan, and it- Italy. And we have the uh, editor for Japan from uh, SpeedHunters.com from uh, Need for Speed video game. Wow, yeah, that's so, really cool. <laughs> so SpeedHunters.com is coming down. We've got uh, a motorbike, uh, uh, Harley Davidson, a custom motorcycle from Rough Craft Taiwan. Uh, we're shipping the bike over. Flat 4 of Japan, uh, they make uh, awesome air-cooled VWs. So they're bringing their drag racer. It's a 1952 model uh, VW Beetle. Uh, we have uh, artists, custom culture artists. Uh, there's four of them coming down from Japan. Uh, the, uh, the publisher for Burnout Magazine from Japan is coming down. Uh, we got from Taiwan as well, uh, Air Runner Custom Paint. So, uh, so what, I'm lot. He- <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm hearing is that you have not, I guess, you know, for car enthusiasts, mm. you have people from all sorts of industries mm. coming to this event. Everyone yeah. from, you know, publishers to uh, those involved in the video game industry, yeah. as long as involved with, yeah. uh, you know, custom cars and hot rods, it's yeah. it, they're all going to be there. That's yeah. terrific. Yeah. But it, it certainly sounds like a great variety. So will all the, all the people going for the event uh, who understand the phrase, slam it to the ground, uh, <laughs> be able to recognize these individuals? I mean, are they so big in the field? Um, well, um, for Moon Eyes, I think people will know who right. they are. You know, for for car guys, uh, uh, if they're into custom or hot rodding mm-hmm. or modification, they know the name Moon Eyes. Right. Um, for people like uh, Rough Craft of Taiwan, for general public, right. that's why we bring their bike down. Uh, right. This is a world championship winning bike. Uh, it won a competition in Germany, so it's the best in the world. So yeah. we bring the builder and the bike. So general public gets to see the, the final product. Of course. And, mm. and the idea of getting so many different kind of people mm. to be in the event was... Um, a logistical nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. that, that definitely. But uh, I think it's to expose m- uh, a more variety of people yeah. to, to what uh, custom culture is. Because if we keep it too close-knit mm-hmm. and exclusively custom culture, yeah. then uh, maybe it's a bit hard to communicate to a bigger audience. Yeah, so, and I you suppose know. people can relate better. Yeah, yeah. Yes. correct. Okay. So. And then, of course, uh, you know, a lot of um, folks who are coming in from these respective countries, mm. um, you know, Japan, Taiwan, and of course, mm. some in Europe, um, you know, these countries seem to have attached towards uh, custom culture and, and these types of cars mm. uh, more organically than perhaps we have. And mm. um, what, what has it, you know, when you come to these types of countries and cultures, why do you think they've you know adapted so much and, and responded so well to it? Um, well, it's history, uh, you know. Uh, outside of Malaysia, especially Europe or Japan, they've had long history. But in Malaysia and in Asia, I think uh, we have that spirit. You know, we we want to continually improve. You know, and I think uh, custom culture um, defines that or helps them find their, their what it is that they're looking for. Are there, are there other nations that are particularly good at it, or, or, and other nations that are maybe not so naturally inclined? <laughs> well, uh, Indonesia, Singapore. Indonesia, yeah, Indonesia has a big uh, community. Um, they have the advantage of uh, craftsmen. Mm-hmm. So these craftsmen have moved on from. Um, the traditional traditional wow. arts Some into things. automotive arts because I guess it's it's a new market for them and and they are exporting their goods or their services abroad as well. Okay. Uh, in in Philippines, there's a big movement. Uh, Singapore uh, in, in the tattoo industry in the arts, yes, uh, but in automotive, I think uh, they're having a bit of a problem there. Um, but in Malaysia, why why uh, we love when it's host here one is of course it being in my home country but um, we have access 
So it's easier for us to ship all these cars from overseas, uh, and it's uh, about hundred US dollars probably to to fly into Malaysia. So uh, I've got friends, a lot of friends in Indonesia who joined us for a trip to Yokohama for mm. the Munai show. So they had to uh, get visa, and it's uh, you have to have proof of income, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it wasn't really easy for them to go to Japan. So I thought. Uh, Malaysia could be a small bridge, you know, not a giant show. It's still a community show. It's still quite small, but nice. we tr- we try our best to bring in all these icons from uh, abroad and uh, create that bridge. You know, from uh, Indonesia, Singapore, from uh, Philippines, come here, get a taste of it, and maybe when time comes, uh, go to Japan or US or Australia. We we're speaking uh, earlier mm. off air about uh, you know what's happening in Japan and how mm. uh, they continually in, in all sorts of other areas. C- try to refine and redefine uh, mm. something that is not necessarily theirs. Could you elaborate a little bit more about that? Yeah, I think uh, the, the Japanese has a fantastic knack for that. You know, they, they, they're quick to adopt and uh, they, they, they create it uh, to become their own without ad- actually modifying it into something that is not. Yeah, they keep it true in a sense. So I think it's it boils down to kaizen. Like, you know, they just continually improve, improve, improve. So it's it's not ceremonial. It's not like do something, boom. No, you know, it's just slowly. And uh, when you do that, you know, it, it I think it it just speaks volume about uh, them as a society. I think uh, Japan is fantastic that they allow uh, personal space and freedom. I think that's key. I mean, I I. I I'd love to see more of that here, you know, where we are given space to develop things that we think that we're good at, you know? So, sure. yeah. Now, uh, of course, when it comes to organizing uh, this event, the Art of Speed, um, you know, was it difficult to get organizers and, and brands and, and co-sponsors to jump in on this whole scene? Because it's certainly something foreign to them mm-hmm. uh, to some degree. And, and was it difficult to convince them? Uh, uh, at the start, yes, because um, a lot of times... Uh, Sponsors like to or tend to compartmentalize. So you're either a concert or, or you're a car art, show. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we're a mix of everything, you know. Uh, but the thing is, we're not watered down at all. You know, we're really celebrating each and every element that we have. Every one of that has a highlight. Uh, but now into its third year, uh, we've had great success with uh, getting sponsorship. I think uh, they understand that we're tapping into. Like a better word, psyche, lah. You know mm-hmm. uh, that whole. Oh, like a lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's basically what people want. You know, they want an avenue to celebrate uh, things that they like. So, other speed enables that. You know, and and. Uh, Sponsors are, are joining that. Well, of course, uh, you know, last year you had about 60,000 visitors <laughs> over the two days. So, I, I clearly, for sponsors, like, oh, let me do the math here. Yeah, yeah it, it seems like a good space as well. Yeah, I mean, that's very impressive. And, you know, always for events, uh, you know, sponsorship, sponsorship is something that's hard to come by. But it certainly sounds to me, I, I'm sure you're making it sound easier than it was. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, nobody right? just jumps on that bandwagon. Yeah. I need to be a part of that action, you know. No, but of course, you know, on something um, as very specific or niche, I mean, to some mm. degree, it's quite a niche thing, mm. but of course has the has the ability and the platform to mm. become something quite impressive. Because mm. car enthusiasts in Malaysia, to some degree, as we've spoken before, uh, it's about about the car show. It's about you mm. know the lights and and being exposed to something that's just beyond the car, but about mm. the entire environment of it mm. as well mm. is you know very new. Yeah, it is. Um, I I think uh, that's what separates us from other shows. Traditionally in Malaysia, for the car. Uh, community has always been about gathering or TT, mm. you know. So I think uh, what we're doing is uh, taking up a notch uh, without saturating it into becoming uh, car showrooms or bike showrooms. You know, we're still uh, there's still that very strong element of community in our show. So I think uh, that that uh, goes well with our fans, you know. And I think uh, sponsors are seeing that. Well, how important is it to have a large local presence uh, among? vendors, booths, and even attendees, for that matter? Well, it's very important, you know. Um, uh, sponsors want to know imp- uh, results from your impact study. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All the fun yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so it's very, very important. So we try to tailor our, our content to reach a large audience, uh, but at the same time, uh, staying true. Uh, like this year, we collaborate with Tempatan Fest, uh, which is a festival of local clothing. So um, they in turn create some products which are relatable to us and we give them a, a space which fits 70 booths 
know, 70 different brands. Yeah. So, um, I mean, how do you decide who to sort of team up with or, you know, is, is everybody welcome? Because I'm assuming we, there are some brands who also see it as an opportunity themselves. Yeah. Like, you know, this is going to attract a certain type of demographic yeah. and it's, it's quite appealing to them too. Yeah. Uh, we, we take it offline and make friends. So the guys that we work with are really close friends of ours and we know uh, what, their, what their drive is, what their end game is. And if it's similar then we collaborate you know we're not just doing it uh, because of well pengisian uh, lah it's not just about content per sure. se content mm-hmm. just to draw people but we have to have a same vision you know Terrific. Now, uh, 7 and 8th of June uh, is the third Malaysia International Custom Culture Show 2014, The Art of Speed. Uh, you've, you've done exhibits in JB uh, as well. Are, are there any plans for the future in other cities? Uh, yes, we have plans in the future. Um, we're looking at the northern region and probably Sabah. Um, it's a bit hard to curate because these cars are custom built. You know, so it, it takes a long time to get them ready to show standards. So, but we're, we're, we're trying to. We'll, we'll see how it goes. The, the bigger the community gets, uh, the more support from uh, garages, workshops and all that, then it will allow us to grow organically. We don't want to do it just because we want to do it. You know, or we've got sponsors on uh, backing us and we just want to do it. You know? we, it has to grow organically. So that the show is a quality show. So I guess there's plenty for a lot of folks uh, you know, to look forward to uh, this uh, 7th and 8th of June 2014. That's right, 7th, of eight, 7th and 8th of June. Go out and have a good time. Don't keep it low that weekend. Don't slam it to the ground. Yeah, that's right. Right. Car- <laughs> Caroline's just happy that we're, we're, we've, we've got a new phrase for the weekend. Slam it to the ground. Uh, now, folks, uh, for more information, you can head to facebook.com slash Malaysia. You can follow them on Instagram, artofspeedmy. Uh, once again, the event is the third Malaysia International Custom Culture Show 2014. The Art of Speed is taking place at Chita Mall, Aradamansara uh, from the 7th to 8th of June 2014. It's on the weekend. It's free. Uh, and of course, um, there's going to be plenty of plenty of, of, of folks uh, to enjoy when it comes to cars and car enthusiasts and custom culture, something that we've just learned very, very quickly. Uh, Asep, thank you very much for your time. Thank uh, you. Thank you. And uh, don't forget, bike fans as well. If you're into bikes, two wheels, you have to join us here. Terrific stuff. The Art of Speed, so definitely check that out. Uh, we've got some more music, but first a quick word from our sponsors. This is BFM 89.9. Thank you for listening to this podcast. To find more great interviews, go to bfm.my or find us on iTunes. BFM 89.9, the business station.